Well, I want to thank everybody. This is great. And, you know, they have me really working. I gave a speech and a roundtable, then another roundtable, then another speech, and here we are. And then we go home, but I don't want to leave your state because I love your state. So maybe we'll just — maybe we'll just stay, Adam, right? So I want to thank Dean Heller, who's been an incredible senator, worked so hard with us to get the taxes cut. Very simple. You know, I talk about reform, but it's really tax cut. There was plenty of reform also, but we had one of the great tax — really the greatest tax cut and reforms ever in our country's history, the biggest. And so uh, I want to thank you. That was a fantastic job. Uh, Dean Heller. And your Attorney General, Adam, who's running for governor, I think you're going to do great. I think you're head and shoulders above. I think you're going to do great. I think you're going to do great. I want to thank a friend of mine, Steve Whitcoff. You know, people don't realize uh, Steve started out as a lawyer, a very good lawyer, top lawyer in New York. And then he said, I'm going to go in the real estate business because I can do this, too. He saw me do it. And he said, if Trump can do it, I guess I can do it, right? Steve was a great — actually, he was a great real estate lawyer. And he represented a lot of us from the Manhattan real estate world. And one day, he said, hey, maybe I'll do this. And he bought a little building, and it worked out. Then he did another one, and it worked out. And uh, now he's done a lot of them, and he's become a very wealthy, successful man. And he's my pal. And it's nice that you're here, Steve. Thank you very much. You. Really great. Special guy. So I want to just tell you that what we've done has not been done before. We've uh, created a lot of different things. We're going to talk about taxes, but just briefly, regulation cuts, the biggest in history. Nobody's ever cut regulations. We're talking about 511 days so far. And uh, you can go four years, you can go eight years, you can go 16 years. Doesn't make any difference. Nobody's cut regulations like we have. Nobody's created tax cuts like we have. Nobody's going to protect your Second Amendment like we will. Every single — every single element. You know, for a lot of the small business owners, and to me this is very important, the estate tax, uh, the small business owners, the farmers, all of the people that we love and we cherish, no more estate tax. The old days, they had to go out and get financing and, and put it up right up to the neck. And then they had to pay interest, and in many cases, they couldn't do it. And, Steve, they'd lose their farms, they'd lose their businesses, they'd lose whatever. And we've cut the estate tax, and for the smaller businesses, there is no estate tax whatsoever. So families can leave their business to their sons and daughters. The Heritage Foundation just came out recently, and they said that we've already implemented 64 percent of our top agenda items, and that's ahead of anybody, including Ronald Reagan. So we've done a lot of work in a very short period of time. And, you know, the bottom line is America is open for business. I got elected on Make America Great Again. Uh, we started using America First, and that's what we're doing uh, on trade. We're renegotiating some of these horrible trade deals that we have with other countries. We have some of the worst deals I've ever seen whether it's China, the European Union, Mexico, Canada, uh, you name it, we have a bad deal. And we're changing those deals. We lost last year $800 billion, with a B, $800 billion on trade. And, uh, in fact, I want to be very precise because Steve is such a great lawyer. It's $817 billion, to be exact. <laughs> That's big money, even in the world of real estate, Steve, right? That's big money. That makes everything we do like a little tiny peanut. And we can't do that. We can't do that. And we're not going to do that. So we're uh, negotiating deals. The steel industry — I don't know if you've been seeing what's happening, but the steel industry is coming back. United States Steel is expanding or building brand-new plants and beautiful new expansions. They haven't done it in 35 years. Another company, a wonderful steel company, just announced a $500 million plant today. Another one's going into Ohio. Uh, we have Ohio, Pennsylvania. We have all of these incredible places. They're seeing the steel industry come back, and I need it to come back. We need it for defense. You know, steel isn't like some other industry. Steel we need. Aluminum we need. We're having tremendous activity in the world of aluminum now. So we put a 25 percent tax or tariff on steel coming in. They were dumping steel all over our country. Now, all of a sudden, if they want to dump, that's okay. They have to pay a lot of money to dump. 
But more importantly, our industry is coming back far faster than we thought. If other countries aren't going to treat us with respect and aren't going to treat us properly on trade, because they haven't with these massive deficits that we have, the big one is a car tax. Uh, they send in cars into our country by the millions and millions and millions, and we pay — I mean, if, if we send cars to them, they either don't want it or it's a big tax. As an example, if we send a car into China, they charge 25 percent. When China sends a car to us, we charge two and a half percent. Somehow, that doesn't work, right? So we're going to change it. And we're going to get along great with China. We're going to get along great with everybody, hopefully, in the end. But we have to change it. It's very — it's not fair. It's not fair to our companies. It's not fair to our workers. One of the big things we just did is we had a great meeting, as you know, and a very successful one with North Korea. And uh, the relationship is now very good. We got along really good. The total denuclearization of North Korea in the process is beginning, and uh, further talks are going on. We're getting our uh, — the remains back of our great heroes. There have been so many people ask me, could you do it? The remains are coming back. They have over 200 already. This is something we never got anything back, anybody back. And so many, I guess, for the most part, it would be the children and the grandchildren. They want to get the remains back of their fathers and their grandfathers. And uh, we're starting that. And it's, it's been uh, really incredible. We got our hostages back. And uh, the New York Times said, well, Obama got hostages back, too. Yeah, but he paid $1.8 billion. <laughs> we didn't pay $1.8 billion. We didn't pay a penny. We paid nothing. Yeah. But at the same time, North Korea was very smart. What they did was very smart. And they made it uh, — they made it so that we got them back. And they are now living with their families very happily. That was two months ago. They're living very happily with their families. And uh, that was something that was great. And very importantly, most importantly, you haven't had any rockets shot over Japan. You haven't had missiles going over Japan. You haven't had any nuclear tests in the last seven months. You haven't had any tests of any kind in the last number of months. Sites have been blown up where they had the testing. Uh, they're getting rid of their engine site. The engines, these are engines. They call them engines for ballistic missiles. That's going. And step by step, it's really working out well. And most importantly, I have a very good relationship. We have a good chemistry together. We got along very well. He's a smart, tough guy. He's a great negotiator. Uh, I think he sees a tremendous future for North Korea, but we want to have it denuclearized, and that's what's happening. So that was a great visit. It was a two-day visit. It was a great visit. It was really quite something. So we're very happy to uh, be involved, and we'll get it done. We'll get it done. And China helped us at the border, I have to tell you. President Xi really helped us at the border. And Japan, Prime Minister Abe was terrific. and. Uh, the president of South Korea, we really worked well together, President Moon. And it's a great team. I mean, honestly, it's a great team. And uh, we uh, did things that everybody said were really impossible to do. Nobody would have believed it. If you remember, before I got elected, it sounded like we were going to war with North Korea. And that was a war that could have cost the lives of 50 million people. You know, Seoul, Steve, when we think New York City's big, Seoul, which is 30 miles off the border, of North Korea has 28 million people, Steve, 28 million. So in New York, we have 8 million, and we think New York is big. Seoul has 28 million people. And it's uh, literally not even nuclear distance. It's right there for their — they call them cannons. They have thousands of cannons aimed at Seoul. And uh, we think that everyone's going to be very safe. We'll keep going with this, but everyone's going to be very safe. I think we've made tremendous progress, and it, it really was a lot quicker than uh, anybody thought possible. So. We're doing very well, and I'd like to maybe we'll start off and we can uh, talk about — you can ask questions or make uh, some suggestions. But maybe I'll ask uh, Adam, do you want to start the process? Sure. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. President, for being here. I wanted to give you an update from the front lines on how Nevada's economy has been soaring over the last few years. We're seeing the results on jobs and the economy firsthand. No state in the country was hit harder by the recession. And today, jobs have come back and businesses stronger than ever. We've been growing by about 40,000 jobs per year. We have our lowest unemployment rate in more than a decade. 
Right now, manufacturing jobs are growing at the fastest rate, and these are good jobs uh, that, that are well-paying, that are able to um, sustain families and, and hardworking Nevadans. This past year, we saw construction jobs go up by 8%. You're very familiar with the strip. Uh, we we sure. see record projects down here and all over Nevada. And we're at a record high for small business jobs. We have over 632,000 jobs and over 18,000 new small business jobs just last year. These important jobs for small mom and pop businesses. Your economic policies are working Thanks to the tax cuts and less burdensome regulation, America's economy is coming back. I have to say that here in Nevada, we are leading the charge. We've got the fastest growing private sector in the country. And as strong as the national economy is growing, thanks to a lot of these reforms, our job growth rate is nearly double the national average. Wages are at record high, and uh, this, this proves, Mr. President, that lower taxes and fewer regulations get results. Thank you very much for leading on those reforms. Thank you. So I would just, I would just close with, uh, we still have a lot more to do here, and I know you have a lot more to do for the, for the country, uh, but we need to fight to keep our taxes low, fight to keep finding ways to reduce regulations that, that do not help our businesses and that are excessive. And I look forward to working together with your administration for our great state. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, Adam. Very nice. Thank you. Steve, go ahead. After that buildup I gave you, you better do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, for, first of all, I'd like to um, thank, every, thank you for having me here today. It's really, as always, a pleasure to be with you. Um, I'm here to tell a story and echo um, what the Attorney General talked about, about a project that we're doing, and, I, and, and it's a success story. So my partner and mutual good friend of the President's, uh, Howard Lauber, and I bought a project, the Fountain Blue Project, which we have now renamed the Drew, after my son Andrew. And this is a approximately nine million square foot project that was 75% built, went through a foreclosure in the financial crisis, 4,000 hotel rooms that will have a cost of roughly $3 billion to complete, but also that laid dormant since 2008, um, in large part because of the financial crisis and some other conditions. It's the only project I know in, the, in a major city in the United States that has laid dormant for the last 10 or 11 years. Why? All the reasons that you have cited. Poor US GDP growth prior to your administration coming in, pessimism among lenders and equity partners, and a prior administration that certainly, in my view, contributed by talking down Las Vegas. President Trump has changed all of that with the tax reform package and the overall fiscal stimulus that this package repre represents. The tax reform package, and I know it well, is chock, fill, chock full of stimulative features, like expensing, which we haven't seen since the days of Ronald Reagan, opportunity zones, which is something not a lot of people are talking about, and I have to commend you because I think it's going to be invigorating in communities that need to see development, all of which are in, designed to encourage business activity. Overall, this administration's policies, which also include deregulation, has led to significant GDP growth. Positive business activity is made possible when government, private investors, and labor come together in a way that benefits everybody. Here, on this project, the Fountain Blue, which we will start construction, construction activity the, uh, in July of 2019, we will create approximately 11,000 jobs in Nevada. That's 3,500 construction jobs. and 7,000 permanent jobs. And we will create a solid investment for ourselves and thereby make a contribution to US GDP growth because of all of this and because of the President's policies. And I would mention one more point about the Drew. 
I lost my son Andrew to an opioid overdose years ago. The president came to his funeral and came to a shiva call, and I talk often about this, about his hug. And the Drew is named after my son Andrew. My family is gr deeply grateful to the president for taking on the fight against substance abuse, which is a pernicious problem, and no one before him took it on. And I think, I think it's just nothing short of incredible. But when this project is finished, my family will dedicate a significant portion of its interest towards this substance abu abuse fight so that my son's death will always have meaning. In my view, it is President Trump who has created the conditions for all of these things to happen. So thank you for having me today. I am deeply grateful to you, Mr. President, for your tireless work, for your dedication to this country. It has been my blessing to have a close friendship with you for 30 years, and it is my honor to call you my president. Thank you. He did good, he did good. Well, I knew Andrew, and he was a great young man. And uh, he, uh, with a great family, father who loved him, mother who loved him, great, great people. So uh, I just want to say that that's uh, it's an honor what you just said. You know, I looked at that site, and then I said, nope, I'm going to run for president instead. But I, I actually... <laughs> And did you buy that from Carl? I did. From Carl? Well, it, Carl. Was, it was some negotiation. I can, can imagine. imagine. With Carl, it's never easy, but that's great. It's going to be a great success. Uh, a beautiful location, and I saw a concept and a design, and it's going, it is really going to be a tremendous success. So congratulations. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Barbara, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pre thank you Mr. Mr. President, for allowing me to be here. I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you all about um, how the, the Drew um, has impacted my life in a positive way. Um, I am a Las Vegas native. I've lived here my entire life. I went to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, graduated in construction management. Um, I met my husband here. I'm raising my two boys here. Um, we really love this city, and I'm, I'm excited to, to be in the city. Um, I am a construction project manager for Whitcoff Group, and the evolution of how that happened is, is sort of interesting. Um, again, when I graduated in construction, I, um, you know, the growth and development in Las Vegas was booming, and so it, I was fortunate enough to be able to work on some of the amazing strip properties that exist today. Um, and, and unfortunately, over the last eight years, the um, it, it, it's construction and development has been slow. And, and I was fortunate enough to be able to go to the Fountain Blue Project and be the property manager there. Um, and a year ago, I met Steve Whitcoff when they were looking at acquiring the property. And um, I was lucky enough to be brought on to their team uh, in the development team. And, and I get to work on this incredible, amazing property um, and resort. And, and when he brought me on, of course, that brought job security that didn't exist before, um, you know, increased compensation and, and really, um, you know, future growth development that, that didn't exist in the preceding years. So I'm really excited to be a part of this project. Um, it's going to be an incredible uh, resort when, it, when it's complete and when the team is really working diligently to, um, to bring something amazing to the Las Vegas Strip. Um, and I, I'm, a, like I said, a longtime Las Vegas resident. And, and I'm really excited about what's happening in the city. There's a lot of growth, um, a lot of development, and it's, it's all very exciting to see happen. And, and again, thank you for letting me to be here. Well, thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you very much. I so much want to ask Whitcoff what he paid, but I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> I just want to see where he is relative to what I think he could have bought at first. I'll ask him after this is up. I know he made a good deal. We have a very special person with us who's become a friend of mine, Alex Acosta. He's the head of the Department of Labor. He's Secretary of Labor. And he's just uh, unveiled a health care plan. You can call it association plan. You can call it whatever you want. But it's going to be millions and millions of people where they're going to have tremendous negotiating rights to buy health care uh, with the insurance companies. You can cross state lines. That means you have a lot more, uh, lot more competition. 
And he's just done a tremendous job as the Secretary of Labor. And I want to uh, ask you to say a few words, Alex, please. Thank you, Mr. President. And let me just say, this is a, a great city to be talking about this. Um, just about two hours ago, I met with Mary Beth uh, Sewold, who's the uh, President and CEO of the Las Vegas uh, Chamber of Commerce. And I wanted to talk with her because the President unveiled these association of health plans on Tuesday. And on Thursday, I read that Mary Beth was already moving to make these into a reality. And so these are so straightforward and so simple. Right now, small businesses have massive disadvantages in providing health care to their employees. The regulatory burden on small businesses is actually greater than on large companies. Think about that. Small businesses, the engine of growth, have a greater regulatory burden than large companies. And they don't have economies of scale. They don't have bargaining power. But what if the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce can bring all these small businesses together and bargain on their behalf as if the chamber is the employer offering the benefits to the employees of all the small business members? And Mary Beth has already seen this opportunity and is already taking action. Mary Beth. And, and her point to me was real simple. After Obamacare, they did a survey of their small businesses. And about a third of them said, we can't afford health care anymore. And in fact, um, a, a lot of the small business owners were saying, we're going to have to get a second job just to try to afford health care. And as a result, they went without coverage. And so she sees this as an opportunity for the chamber to empower small businesses to do what they do best, which is to create jobs and to create economic growth. And that's the idea behind association health plans. These are gonna be really, really big. Thank you for moving so quickly, Mary Beth. And she's a great negotiator. Great negotiator, that's good. You're gonna have fun. They're all gonna be out after, do they wanna, they want that. You know, the insurance companies are going crazy for this, so you're going to have a lot of fun. Good luck. Thanks, Mary Beth. Make a good deal. Please. My turn. Hello, President. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Fong, and I'm the founder of Asian Culture Alliance, a nonprofit community resource center for all Americans across Las Vegas, and the initiator of Nevada official May 18 Asian Culture Day, which are in line of what's next to me, U.S. Open for Business. By the way, I have our, some of our country chair, they have came early and wait, and they just love you. <laughs> Thank you. Chairs. Where are they? Thank you. <laughs> yes. I want to thank. Yes. Thank you. I want to thank Senator Dean Heller for this opportunity, and we need your experience to continue to help our great president for years on end. I'm truly honored to join this round table with the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, one of the presidents that we ever have. Mr. President, your tax cut have delivered an enormous impact on our community. I have seen it day in, day out through my work at the Asian Culture Center, on my professional job as a home inspector. Fewer and fewer people are unemployed, and for the first time in eight years, housing value are increasing in Nevada. Mr. President, you made a promise, and you kept your promise to make America great again. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Kevin. 
to make America <clears throat> great again. Which our children's future depend on your daily decision. Thank you, Mr. President. Me and my kids are so proud of you. Last, may I offer you, Mr. President, a book, The Magnificent Chinese Jay Pagoda. The author, Ms. Mako, is also among the audience, which we are working very hard to bring to Nevada as a culture piece and the summary of Asian Culture Day. May I? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. He did a good job, right? Did he do a good job? Thank you, Kevin. Very nice. Appreciate it. Thank you, and continue to be our greatest president in the history. Oh, thank you. There we go. That's tough to beat. Can you beat that, Ryan? I'll try. I don't know. Be tough. Um, Mr. President, it's an honor to have you back on behalf of Michael and Paula Gon, who are out of the country. They would have been here to greet you personally. Uh, my name is Ryan Growney. I'm the general manager of the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. This is the South Point Showroom. Yeah. And uh, we're a large property in the south end of Las Vegas Boulevard, 2,700 employees, 22 nearly hotel rooms, 2,200 hotel rooms, um, arena, equestrian center with 1,200 horse stalls. So we're talking to my guys here from uh, Silver State, hey. Um, bowling center, movie theater, it's a, it's a large property. And if I could just give two examples, uh, these gentlemen hit on everything that, that I could have said, but on this property, I can assure you the tax cuts um, affected our employees and our business. The first is we were excited about the announcement. We know it's going to be good for the economy. We know it's the right move. We wanted to make sure our employees were excited about it. So shortly after the announcement was made, my boss picked up the phone and asked our payroll director, what would it cost us to do a second round of holiday bonus checks? And she says, a little over a half million dollars. And we had just sent them out three weeks prior. And he says, please prepare the checks and get them in the employees' hands as soon as possible. Good. And that was absolutely immediately a direct result. The second piece of it is uh, something my boss was very happy to do was we hadn't increased the cost of our benefits for our employees in four years. But in the last three years, for the property, the health insurance costs had gone up 32%, which in a property this size, you can imagine what that number is. So in November, we announced that we were going to pass along some of the expense to the employees. And with the announcement, after he gave back the uh, checks, he decided that wasn't enough. So um, unbeknownst, we said, you know, rescind the increase to the employees. So now for, for the last five years, even though increased the the cost has gone up substantially. For the last five years, our employees aren't seeing that increase, so every check they get now will be the same when they look at it, the same as it's been for five years for the health insurance cost, Good. which is almost Good. a half a million dollars. Good. So a million dollars directly from the announcement. Good. Thank you. And, and then to the point of some of the other things that, that came about of this, um, with regards to the depreciation changes, we had a three-year plan to remodel 2,000 of our hotel rooms. Uh, we'd have to do one tower per year, and it's hard. It's, that's not the optimal way to do things, because we'd hire a crew, we'd get them started, and then we'd have to fire them, and then six months later, hire another crew. And when the rules came out and we looked at it, we, we decided that um, we could take advantage of, of some of the capital that got freed up, and instead of spending $30 million in 36 months, we're now going to spend $30 million in 18 months. We're going to keep those guys working. We're going to get a premium room product on the floor available to the public a lot faster uh, to take advantage of some of the things that these guys are talking about. 15,000 new rooms are coming online, 3.8 million square feet coming online. I think it's $18 billion in construction either being planned or underway. Las Vegas Stadium, four miles down the street. So um, a, a lot of those things are due to you. And uh, we just want to thank you for everything you've done. We want to thank you 
you for being here, all the other panelists. It's, uh, it's a great honor. And my friend Jason here is one of our employees, Jason Monje. Um, he runs our uh, Baja Miguel's Mexican restaurant, and he has a fabulous story regarding this property. And if I could, I'd love to ask him just to tell it. Go ahead, Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, appreciate that. Uh, Mr. President, good afternoon, how are you? Um, so I began my career here uh, back in 2008 of August. Um, I worked my way up the ranks uh, and, and, and started as a busboy here um, and was able to, uh, through hard work and determination, uh, make my way up into a managing position um, at the restaurant, at one of our 11 restaurants here on property. Um, with that being said, um, I also have a family member here who works here as well, which is my mother. Um, couldn't have done it without her support and the support of my family as well. Um, she has been he a day one employee here at the South Point, um, which opened back up in December of 2005, so she's been here since then. Um, I am not, also, not only a manager, um, but also a family man. Um, my wife, Martha, is my rock. She's actually here today um, supporting. Thank you. Um, and we have uh, two wonderful boys back at home. Uh, Oscar is four and Diego is two. Um, and your tax cuts enabled our owner, Michael Gahn, um, like Ryan said, to, to give back $1 million um, collectively to all of his employees, myself included. Um, and you have no idea what that's meant for my family. So thank you very much for that. Well, thank you, Jason. That's very nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. And Jason, great hair, number one. <laughs> and Ryan, say hello to Michael, friend of mine, great guy. He's done an incredible job, really. So give him my regards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Please, Richard. Good afternoon, Mr. President. It's an honor and privilege to be here with you today. Uh, I'm a co-owner of Silver State Hay, and uh, the real heart and soul of the company is my wife, Elisa, who also co owns it with me. Go ahead. Uh, I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, my mom's from Cuba, my dad's from Indiana, and they met here in junior high and have been together since. Um, I'm the oldest of six and met my wonderful husband here in Las Vegas. Mr. President, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, raised in uh, Lexington, Kentucky area, enlisted in the Marine Corps uh, about two weeks after high school. We were up Transitioned off of active duty in the western part of the United States, accepted employment here in Las Vegas where I met my beautiful wife. We have uh, two children together, uh, our son Nicholas and daughter Kira. We're very blessed to have our beautiful children. My daughter is here in the audience with us today. Um, we own a, a family-owned business. We're third generation owning it. My grandmother started it. She was a horse trader and a, and a trainer. She got tired of getting ripped off. So she decided to go to the farms herself directly and start buying the hay herself and start selling to friends and neighbors. And my dad took that business and, and made it an actual business. So he began selling around the city here to different feed stores and uh, ranches. And now we own the business. Yeah, Ron, her father, approached us in 2009 to take over the business, which we did. Invested a little money into it. Uh, uh, expanded it and now have customers uh, from pretty much the entire southwestern region of the United States and do over a million dollars in sales a year. Yes, sir. Great. We've even done some overseas shipping recently, so that was pretty cool, too. Uh, people ask me, you know, what I do for a living, and when I tell them I sell hay and, li and, and live in Las Vegas, they kind of give me that crazy look. I'm like, yeah, I did. we have horses here, I promise, I promise. But, uh, Sir, your, your tax cuts have really helped our business. They really have, and we appreciate that. Uh, we recently, I was able to hire another family member uh, due to some of the money we've been saving, and um, we've had a recent increase in sales, about 30% increase this year so far. Uh, our customers are confident in the economy right now. So before they were barely making it, barely able to afford their hay, and right now they're actually stocking up. So that's been a huge, huge benefit for us and for them as well. Wow, 
<laughs> also, Mr. President, your tax credits have benefited our family. Just with the uh, significant increase in the standard deduction, as well as the child tax credit, we stand to uh, gain about $1,650 next year alone, which just isn't a drop in the bucket. Uh, bottom line, Mr. President, we appreciate your efforts, uh, under, efforts for the tax cuts under your leadership, and, and thank you for the boost in money in all of our pockets. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much. It's a very good team, isn't it? Back and forth. Now, did you practice that? That was really that was good. good timing. <laughs> thank you very much, Bob. Thank you. So a friend of mine, somebody that's really been in the trenches with us, he fought very hard with all of the Republicans. We had no Democrat support. Uh, it was uh, too bad. Uh, and I think it's going to come back to haunt them. But uh, Dean Heller, Senator Dean Heller, has been somebody that really got in there, and he fought as hard as anybody I know to make sure that you got that tax cut and reform, and uh, that everybody else in our country got it. And they're very happy about it. And the Democrats are actually now saying they've got a problem, because it's worked out far better than anyone thought. And when you add the regulations and all of the other things we've been doing, uh, it's a great combination. And while you're all talking about the economy is doing well, it's going to get a lot better. Uh, expensing is something, Ryan, that, as you call him your boss, Michael, would uh, know very much about. But when you're expensing is, I think, going to be the sleeper in the bill. We have another where, uh, literally, uh, trillions of dollars are going to come back into the country. Apple has already agreed they're going to be investing $350 billion. They're bringing approximately $230 billion back from overseas, where you would have never seen that money again without what we did in terms of the reform on the tax cuts. So there's just one example where Apple's spending $350 billion. And you have many companies doing that. You have many, many companies. They're spending money. And uh, it's uh, really something very beautiful to see. It's jobs. It's, uh, it's imagination. It's so many different elements are at play. But our country is doing really well, and it's going to even do better. We're working very hard on the border with the immigration. Uh, we have to be very strong on immigration, but we have to let people in, the right people, where we have a merit-based system. We're developing a beautiful merit-based system so we can fill all of the jobs that you all created. And that's working out very good. But we do have to be very strong. And if we're not, you're going to have millions and millions of people come up, and it's not going to be a good situation. It'll be a very bad situation. If you look at what the uh, Democrats are doing, and Dean understands this better than anybody. If you look at what they're doing, uh, they want to have a very weak border, a very open border, and uh, that's going to lead to tremendous crime and a lot of problems for a lot of people, including including jobs. It's going to be a very bad situation. So uh, we're working very hard on it. It'll get done. It'll get done properly. Uh, we have to be very vigilant and strong, uh, but uh, a lot of good things are happening. So I want to uh, just uh, introduce Dean Heller, a real champion, uh, a hard, hard worker, and a, a total winner. And he's got a tough race, but I think I saw a poll just a little while ago that looks very, very promising, very good, even uh, beyond what we thought. I don't even want to tell you, because maybe you'll <laughs> ease up, and I don't want him to ease up. It's not Because it's going to be a tough race. Happen. But uh, he's going to win that race, and we need you back in Washington. And he has really been an incredible messenger. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. President, thank you very much for uh, coming to Nevada, uh, coming back to Nevada. You've been here many times and uh, uh, for us here in Nevada. And listening to you and hearing the issues that you discuss, uh, health care, immigration, crime, uh, uh, tax issues, all of these issues, how the economy is doing is important for all of us. So I want to thank you uh, for all your hard work and effort. I'm going to share a quick story that I shared earlier. I've been with the president all day today, so he may get tired of listening to me um, at this point. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, I want to thank our panelists that are here today. Uh, I want to thank the Labor Secretary also. And Mr. President, you've heard stories from a, a bunch of Nevadans here uh, today, and there's a lot more out here in this audience. I want to thank everybody that is here having an opportunity to listen to this president. Isn't it great uh, to have a chance to have him in front of us?
But I want to share... I want to share one quick story that I shared earlier, and this meant a lot to me, and that's probably why I'm sharing it. But uh, in, the, uh, in the very depths of the uh, tax reform package uh, and the struggles and the fights, and as the president said, we didn't have any support from the other side of the aisle, so we had to get it right. Um, I spent time with his uh, Treasury Secretary, uh, Steve Mnuchin. And he called me in, in fact, we were having breakfast together, and we were getting into the uh, depths of this and just making sure that this tax package that came out uh, of Congress uh, would, uh, would do exactly the benefits that we heard around this uh, table today. Um, but uh, Treasury Secretary said to me, I want to show you something. And it was a framed article that was on the wall next to his desk. It was a Wall Street Journal article, and it was, uh, their announcement that the president, uh, President Trump, had just nominated him as Treasury Secretary. And the president cut this article out and sent it to the Treasury Secretary, and what he wrote on it was what was important. And on it, the president wrote 5% GDP. Now keep in mind, we had been wallowing in less than 2% GDP for the last 10 years. And this guy gets nominated Treasury Secretary, and the message that he gets from his boss is, I want 5% GDP. Where are we today, Mr. President? We're doing very well. You've probably seen uh, 3.2, which people would have said would have been impossible. And there's only a projection, so who knows what that means. But the Atlanta Fed just predicted 4.8, right? Something like 4. that. Yeah, 4.8. Think about that. Each. They who, knows, who knows what it'll be? I, I will say this. Each point is said to be $3 trillion. Think of that. So, you know, a point, two points, three points. But each point is said to be $3 trillion. And each point is said to be 10 million jobs. So I think we're going to do yeah. very well. And we're going higher than that number, ultimately. Mr. President, Mr. President, I just want everybody here in the room, and they all know it, and these are all my friends out here and your friends. I just want everybody to know how hard this administration works every single day every single day to create these kind of jobs. And the fact that, Superman. Uh, just the fact that you have a Treasury Secretary who says to me every day I come to work, I look on the wall and I know exactly what my boss wants. I think that uh, sends a message not only to that office, but also uh, across the board uh, to everybody else that works uh, in this administration. Mr. President, thank you for coming to Nevada. Thank you for taking time. Thanks for all the hard work you do. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank all the people of Nevada. It's been a, uh, it's been just a great place from my standpoint. Nevada is uh, special. It's been so many friends, so many friends just in the audience. We have to get our friend into office. We need him there very badly. If that doesn't happen, and if other things would happen, you're going to have a massive tax increase and you're going to have a regulation increase, and it's not going to be a good situation. A lot of bad things will go on, and we can't let that happen. It's going to be a nasty race. It's already started to be nasty. Pretty much all of them are, for some reason. Uh, nobody really knows why. But, you know, it has been this way before. I said to one of the senators, Dean, I said, has it always been this nasty? And I won't tell you which two or three administrations, but he actually has been around a long time. He named three different times what he thought it was worse. I said, that's pretty hard to believe. But, but it's, uh, it's tough stuff, but we're winning. We're winning like nobody's ever won before, and we want to keep it going. So get Adam and get Dean and get him in there, and I'll be back a lot. Thank you all much. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.